it just is what it is. It's the experience of being a Celtics fan. It's never easy. Coming from a fan of a team that's playing their boogeyman, God. Y'all boogeyman sucks. Ladies and gentlemen, last night, game two in Boston on Causeway Street, the number eight Miami Heat go, uh, go up against the number one Boston Celtics without Jimmy Butler, without Terry Rozier, and the Boston Celtics lose by 10. Wow. Wow. Tying up the series. Apparently, it's the biggest upset since... The Clippers beat the Warriors in 2019 when the Clippers had like Pat Bev in them. Uh, yeah, the biggest upset, single game upset in the playoffs since then. So, um, y'all, 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 y'all go first, man. Thought thoughts on last night's game? Did y does it affect what y'all think about the rest of the series? Um, all of that, all of that. Yes, it does. Heat in five. Heat in five. Heat in five. Heat Heat win these. Um, not gonna lie, they just don't want it. They just don't want it. It's like, let me stop. Um. <laughs> I do think that uh, Boston is still going to win. I'm not going to overreact. It'd be funny, and I hope so for the sake of not having to hear a bunch of Laker, Laker, LOL, you lost guys hitting me up. So I hope Boston loses and gets that unanimous number one pack. But, um, I mean, y'all even got B Buddy doing Tatum dances in Tatum jerseys now. So it's, it's, it, was bad. it was that bad. He got was, clapped on was, Twitter. Did you see that? Yeah, he got clapped on Twitter. That's how bad it truly is. Like, it, it was an awful loss. Um... End of an era. Bam didn't even get going in the first quarter, but then in the fourth quarter looked like the best player on the court Look, when KG Jason there, Tatum is on the court. Speaking speaking of Jason Tatum being on the court, dog, his help didn't look that good either. What the fuck, KP? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I'm over here watching the game, testing out for VIPs and playback. Playback's free, by the way. Check it out. But um, we're over here uh, quizzing niggas for VIPs. I'm like, damn, now I think about it. Is KP scored? So then I hop on the PlayStation after all the shit. And I'm like, yo, how many points did KP have, y'all? Oh, man, Sage, that nigga had, like, a bucket. A bucket? <laughs> a, a, a bucket? Like, yo, are you kidding me? Like, I, I didn't remember him scoring the ball at all, let alone getting a bucket. So, nah, it was bad. I'm not going to lie. And this is my problem with Boston time in and time out. I'm going to let Dama go because I'm long-winded. But all I'm going to say is I have thought the Celtics were contenders even as early as 2018, even though technically I didn't have a shot in hell of them beating Golden State. But everyone else, I thought they were that damn good. They've been this damn good for about six years. They've had the best roster in the league from top to bottom for about four, in my opinion. But they just, for some reason, uh, inex unexplicably, inexplicably, impossibly, somehow lose these easy ass games so do i think they'll get past miami yes but this is my exact reason why i don't think they're winning a championship football offseason is ramping up tremendously trades after trades signings after signings who will win next year who will succeed well over at prize picks you can succeed if you play daily fantasy let's take a look at prize picks we've got some easy numbers here we got cj stroud my personal mvp for four thousand yards on the season you can do the whole season no, that's I crazy am learning oh, something crazy. today and i'm about to go cold. i'm about to make a 30 minute drive Woo! and then on the receiving side of things we've had some moving and we've had some shaking but i think one of the more guaranteed picks more for four 99 and a half make sure that you place those things early for the football season i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna put some change on there i'm a little scary so i'm gonna just put that for the long game right there and i'm gonna hit place entry and it is just as simple as that on prize picks and if you use code lkib you guys can get a hundred percent match on your first deposit of up to 100 dollars. links to everything will be in the description down below and shout out to prize picks for sponsoring this podcast Everything I thought about y'all was confirmed with that loss. Everything that I thought about Miami was disproved by that win. Type shit. I Release! Froze. I froze. All right. All right. I'm one on one. Oh I am him. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, so, that's so bad. I come back to release. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> what was the last thing I said? Oh, yeah. Everything I knew about the Heat was proven wrong because they beat y'all. Um, hey, man. There's not too much... Uh, dancing around this, I can do. There's not too many gritties I can hit because I am a Laker fan, so it's it's only so much I can say in these playoffs. But that is 
coming from an embarrassed fan, that's got to be embarrassing, man. Like, yeah. and coming from a team, coming from a fan of a team that's playing their boogeyman, god damn, y'all boogeyman sucks. Because, oh my god, I couldn't imagine the Lakers losing to a Jokic less, Jamal Murray less <laughs> nugget. Oh my god, I'm Jamal Murray now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I mean, what no, I'm do. saying, I'm saying the best player not being there, whoever you I want to be. Aaron Gordon less Jokic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you know what, I mean? All right. Let me get my shit off, man. Let me get my shit off. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got a game. Yeah, it's your clip. It surprises me, and it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Did I did I think the Celtics were going to win last night? Absolutely. <laughs> did I think the Celtics were going to sweep? I'm going to be honest with you. I believed it. Did I think the, the Miami Heat was going to break their all-time three-point record against us? No. So that's where it surprised me, but it didn't. You know what I'm saying, Chad? It, it, it just it just is what it is. It's the experience of being a Celtics fan. It's never easy. It's never easy. It's never an easy road. You can even go back all the way to 2008, bro. We faced a 37-win Atlanta Hawks team in the first round as a 66-win team fully healthy, and they took us to seven. We went to seven against LeBron and friends in the second round, and then the Pistons took us to six, and then... You know, we, we went to six in the finals, but for a team that was supposed to be the OG super team, even that year had some dramatics. The last two years have had a lot of dramatics as a Celtics fan, and uh, I think this is just a part of the course. This is just a part of the process. Am I going to overreact after game two? Yeah, because I want my clip, okay? <laughs> I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman, all right? Um, do I have the Celtics still winning this series? Absolutely. But, um, yeah, nothing was really confirmed. Like, like with Damo, nothing was really confirmed nor denied last night. Like, every everything I thought about this team is, is what it is. The offense gets stagnant as shit. Eric Spolstra is clearly the better coach. He is uh definitely one of those dudes where you don't want to bet against him. I don't care who is on the floor. Or whoever is going to be on the floor is going to be well coached. Uh, they're going to put up a battle of some sort. And you just, you just, you just don't count them out. Uh, t in, in any specific game, there's always a chance of them winning. I want to shout out Tyler Hero. He had a playmaking uh, masterclass out there with 14 assists. Uh, Jovic was giving them good minutes as well. Um, Bam Adebayo, again, looked like Kevin Garnett out there. Was actually scoring buckets. Um, and then on the other side, we got East Darvin Ham. We got, D we got East Darvin Ham, all right? You might not think he's as bad as Darvin Ham, but the premise is the same. Got a shit ton of talent in front of you. Know how to utilize it. And the fact that when the, the when the Heat were going on a run, Jason Tatum, while having a good game, was just sitting on the bench. What are we doing? Instead of having his hands in his pockets, he got his hands on his hip like this. It's the same shit, dude. He just got a different fucking skin. This shit is insane. Um, And then uh, Drew Holiday. Definitely, uh, Bucks fans warned me about his playoff woes, and I took it seriously when they first, you know, brought it up. He is closer to Marcus Smart than what a lot of people think, for better or for worse. We did not see Kristaps Porzingis last night. That was Tingus Pingus. That was the dude we were slandering while playing with Luka. Shout out to Jalen Brown. He definitely improved that left hand, but, um, we move on, man. I said after game one on the pod, too. What's there to be happy about? Job not finished. I do want to ask y'all this, though, because I was talking about it on my stream, too. Do y'all think you can respect your opponent too much in sports? Respect them too much? Yeah, because, you know, the, like, a lot of teams go into a game or a series on some, like, you know, don't underestimate your opponent because if you do, you know, they're gonna, it's going to bite you in the ass type shit. Re always respect them and play your best. Yeah, yeah. So it would have to, I think, technically, no. But in the terms of what we're talking about of a 100% to be to dumb it down to the furthest degree yeah it's called overestimating your opponent i'm yeah. not going to lie if you if you're if you're sitting back like yo Giannis one of the best players in the world step up on that 3 oh what the hell <laughs> oh, what the let him shoot oh, like he he made the last two ones no no he's going to miss the third fourth and fifth just back up like what are we doing if 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 we lose the honest threes tonight then go for it so yeah, for sure you can over respect or if respect isn't the word and I in my opinion maybe that's semantic key, but I actually would say it's probably not the word. But overestimate your opponent? Yeah, all day. I a hundred percent um believe that you can over respect your opponent. Uh we've seen it plenty of times. I personally think when you go into a series uh when I even scratch that, how Toronto handled playing LeBron back in the mid twenty tens is a clear mm -hmm. case of a team. 
overly respecting somebody. That that is the best example I can give. Caven can't even lie. Demar Rose sitting on the podium saying, "I mean, huh, we would have won if we had LeBron too." Is why that that's overly respect. So yeah, I absolutely agree. Jason Tatum's assessment of the loss: we knew it wasn't going to be easy. There's a lot of history between these two franchises, especially recently. Regardless of seeding, who's in or who's out, it's the playoffs. It's never going to go how. Uh, how people expect it to go. And again, I don't I don't want to make it seem like, you know, don't respect your opponent. Uh, don't take them seriously because obviously that will bite you in the ass and that's how upsets happen if you go into a series um, with that mentality. But also, on the other side, I also feel as if when you're a 66-win team with the talent that they got, dog, like, going up against this team hobbled up, I don't think you go into this series on some... But we got to respect Miami, man. You know, they're just so well coached. You know every game is going to be tough with them. Just That's just what you got to expect. Like, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes when you go into a series or something competitive, if you're the big dog, you got to act like the big dog from start to finish. And I just, game one, I kind of sort of got that energy after Caleb Martin that Jason Tatum, I understand that was controversial. But game two, it was just, bro, put the fucking foot down. I don't I don't know. I, I, I didn't like the energy in game two whatsoever, dog. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not going to lie, Souls. I'm calling you out on this because I've always thought that you've been a little bit too, not underestimating of your Celtics, but too, like, oddly passive of your Boston Celtics. And maybe subconsciously you know that they're, they're not as good as marketed or whatever. But, like, for example... Like, the whole contenders debate that we had on, on playback for free, where you're talking about when they were contenders is one thing. But, like, the idea that, like, y'all y'all are, like, scared of the heat. Like, bro, y'all damn near won 70 games. What are we What are we talking about? Bro, if y'all don't go there and sweep the Jimmy butler list heat, how the hell are y'all sitting there like, hold on now, this is going to become – Nigga, if the Lakers wants Damo, if we were the 70-win Lakers, I'm not going to lie. Y'all have been voted for a fucking click or a low to replace me. I'd have been literally insufferable. Like, mom, and I know some of you guys think that now, but oh my lord, boy, you'd have packed me up. Because there ain't no way I'd have been sat here and talked about, I don't know, some AC Pelicans and be like, oh yeah, Lakers are losing. Boy, Lakers in three. So there, yeah, and I think that's even come trickled down to the fandom, let alone the players. So I, I agree with you here, but I also think that. To a degree, you, but let alone Boston fans, y'all just always like, hey, y'all got to get more assertive. Listen, listen, I would have agreed with you wholeheartedly, and I just, just retweeted that. But after dealing with our own boogeyman, I promise you, this season, oh, no, no, if we no, had no, 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 wins, no, no, no. and this Nuggets team was the eighth seed because of how the West was, I promise you, Sage, I'd have been up there like this. No, no, no. Hey, we good against 99% of the West because hey. we matched up with fucking Denver, and I'm shook. I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm nervous. Hey, 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 so, look, 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 look. Look, look, the one caveat <laughs> that I will say is I ain't going to lie. Look, be nugget niggas. But the, the, the thing that I can say, the difference between uh Boston, Miami, and Denver Lakers, the obvious one, Denver's just seen as better, marketed as better. Hell, watch them, they're better. The only thing is, for some reason, Nuggets fans, and God, I just want one win because I'm starting to hate Nuggets fans for this. They just act like a fucking victim. And then when they start beating us, they get all cocky and snarky. And then next season, they act like the fucking victim again. Dog, nobody thinks y'all are worse than us. Not, not one person, bro. <laughs> not, not a single soul alive. You think you are genuinely worse than the Lakers. But these niggas sit there on Twitter like everyone thinks that they're like, no, nobody thinks this shit. Nobody. Literally not one person that's genuinely put them on a lie detector test. Thinks the Nuggets are better than the Lakers. That's the difference. Everyone thinks Boston is better than Miami, but then Boston just somehow loses. And that's what makes it a rivalry. The Lakers shit, it's kind of like dumb expected, but a bunch of biased niggas saying now nah, the Lakers are going to win it. 